at long last, I have waited for lifetimes, eons even, to bring you this video of how to draw a cornfield. Many have wondered, pondered, how to go about drawing cornfields, and I must tell you that during my travels to the land of enchantment, I've learned the ways of the land, I've studied in the most studious of places, and I finally found a way to conjure up cornfields on command. Okay, <laughs> as I may have mentioned in one of my previous videos, I made an animated short for school, and it was by far the biggest project I've worked on. I poured my heart, my soul, and you know, whatever, blah, 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 blah. However, one of the things that gave me trouble was the backgrounds. One of the scenes in my short takes place in a cornfield, and I tried, you know, winging it as I usually do, but that was definitely not the way to go. At first, I attempted drawing every single stalk of corn, but I found out shortly that that was not the way to go. <laughs> so I tried looking up some references and see how other animated features depicted corn. And boy, oh boy, it, there, there was actually not too many animated shows that I know of that have cornfield backgrounds. So, you know, it, it was very challenging to find a reference for what I was looking for specifically, especially in animation. There, there are plenty of movies that are shot in cornfields. Animation, not so much. It, they're, they're kind of hard to come by. Now, I did come across some backgrounds from Over the Garden Wall. For those of you who haven't seen it, you should totally see it. It is so good. But anyways, I did look at these backgrounds from Over the Garden Wall. And while it didn't quite match what I was going for, I think that's where I started to get an idea of how I was supposed to approach drawing my cornfield. So I did my best to closely analyze these. And if you look really closely, it's basically just a huge gradient wall and then like some lines over that. The leaves and stalks are more towards the center and near the top of the stalk, it gets like a bit more frizzy, I guess you could say. And towards the bottom, it's a bit of a flat wall and the gradient shows through. So I kind of got a clue of how like to go about depicting this cornfield. And so yeah, I did exactly that. I drew a great big wall and then I started adding light and dark strokes to break up the gradient a bit. Then I started to draw the stalks in a black outline, but that was getting very tricky and learning to draw the shapes of the stalks was starting to get like a bit too difficult and discouraging. So I started to go through my brush packs and I found this brush that I got from Devin L. Kurtz, which by the way, you should go check out her art. It is incredible and she has some really great brush resources. And I think I've actually mentioned her before in another one of my videos. It was a part of her like anime, like grass tree, like in plants brush drawing video that she did, all that stuff, um, which I believe is free or was free at some point. But, um, but yeah, I went through those brushes and then I saw one of them that closely resembled a stalk of corn, which was perfect for what I was doing. So yeah, I made a new layer over the gradient and I started placing stocks in parts and areas that needed to have like detail. I was switching between light and dark gray and staying away from black because I wanted to be able to glaze over um, like all of this in color. And I'll talk about that later. But yeah, I started playing around with adding different variations of brushes just to see if they would add anything to the background. And I actually found a brush that is very light and wispy and I added like some of those details near the top so that it has like a very nice silhouette and it also has like very nice highlights on the end of the stalks. After noticing how cool the highlights were at the end of the stalks, I decided that I should add some in between the main stalks and it just kind of added some contrast in areas that were starting to get muddy or a little too like hard to differentiate. And now this is where the fun begins. You may have noticed now that I've done everything in black and white. And I do this because when I was in college, I took a painting class and one of the techniques that we learned is called glazing. And the process of glazing consists of starting a painting in black and white. And then once you have like the composition of your piece and like, you know, once, once you have everything figured out in black and white and you're satisfied with the contrast, you take oil paint and you thin it out like thin, 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 like with Galkid and, you know, oil and stuff. And then you start putting it onto the canvas and then layer by layer, you start adding color in areas and you don't have to worry too much about mixing darker and lighter colors to match the values and shadow values. And for some reason, when I took my painting class, that just that that method of coloring just like really clicked with me. And it kind of helped me a lot because like when, when I, I didn't know that method before, 
I get really, what's the word? Like, it's really tough for me to mix colors and like kind of do color theory stuff. And like, I, I, I just get really, my, my paintings t tend to get really muddy really quick because of the lack of contrast. Cause sometimes I guess I confuse saturation for brightness. Anyways, <laughs> once I learned the glazing technique, I it just kind of transferred like digitally. That's the only way I can, well, not the only way, but for the most part, when I paint, that's mostly <laughs> how I paint now. Um, so yeah, like I said, I got really comfortable with how it was looking black and white. And then, I mean, look at that. <laughs> you put the color on and whoosh. It, it, it just goes on so neat. And all the colors are uh, like, uh, and all the colors are like respectively light and dark. And there are some nice saturation going on within like the light and dark areas. And even on the ground, you can even see it like really come to life. Like how effective this method is once you put the color over. And uh, yeah, I just started doing that, you know, um, adding a couple layers above and below and just kind of experimenting with the different layer styles like multiply, overlay, just seeing what looked good and then adding on different colors, you know, J just layering on a different color. So it's not, it's not one uniform color and it's got like some variation to it too. And um, yeah, honestly, that's, that's really it. <laughs> that's, that's really all I really did for these backgrounds for my animated short. Um, now there is one thing that I did have to make sure of, which is that, um, you know, my characters fit into this universe. And I think that's very important because one of the things that I noticed in some of my, in some of the other parts of my show, short and other people's shorts that like of the other people that were in my class one of the things that i noticed is that their characters kind of don't fit in the background too well like they kind of just they just stick out or something or they just don't it, it's like they just don't belong in there or something so you know i, I wanted to make sure that they kind of work in there or they kind of fit in that universe so i came up with a quick character design and i started I started painting him on top of the cornfield and um, yeah, for the most part, I think that my character, you know, I think it was compatible with my style of characters. And I also did reference the characters from Over the Garden Wall just to see how, you know, those characters fit into their universe to see like, you know, how much cell shading there is or how muted the color palettes are to see how well they, you know, fit in the background like they have to stand out but not stand out too much to where you can tell if that makes any sense um but yeah i felt very satisfied and i continued to make my cornfields uh for like the rest of my scenes and like other shots oh yeah yeah, yeah. and at the very end i also had the idea of my characters coming out of some of the corn stalks so i started making paths coming from there but yeah this illustration was done for the most part and uh yeah anyways i'm really happy with how it came out i kind of I'm, I'm really proud of how it came out just because like the, I, you know, I kind of had to figure it out on my own how to make like a cornfield and how to render it in such a way where people know what it was. But, you know, at the same time, like, I don't know, keeping it simple and finding like an efficient way so that I can keep repeating these backgrounds for different shots and scenes and so that they would look kind of connected, I guess you could say. And I think I did do that. I think I did a good job doing it too. And it actually became a bit of an inside joke with my class just because <laughs> the first time I presented <laughs> uh, when I did the storyboards for this scene, I didn't know how to draw the cornfield, so <laughs> I drew something that looked like this. <laughs> and I, I, I had, I apologized so much to my classmates. Like I, I, I kept telling them I was just like, okay, everybody, please excuse these first couple of attempts because I like the, this is supposed to be like, you know, like a, a cornfield, but it just looks like a bunch of lines. It's ugly. I'm sorry. I'm figuring it out. And then I dedicated, I went on this lifelong journey <laughs> of how to draw corn. <laughs> And uh, yeah, it, it was hilarious. The class was in on it. Everyone loved the, the corn once I finally presented it. Uh, even my professor got in on it a bit and <laughs> she told me that these backgrounds were very well rendered. So I, I pat myself on the back for these. <laughs> um, but anyways, yeah. So feel free to, you know, try out this method, maybe get the brush pack or maybe don't, maybe, maybe see what you can take from my video and see if you can create a cornfield without the brush pack. I'd love to see your best attempt at drawing corn. Literally, draw a cornfield, tag me, tell me how the experience went, and uh, yeah, yeah, I'd, I'd love to see how people can, you know, do this without a brush pack. 
because I think the brush pack did, you know, definitely helped out a lot for the majority of the painting. But um, yeah, I mean, it's always fun to experiment. Maybe I'll find another way to, you know, draw them or maybe make my own brush and see if I can do something with that. But yeah, thanks again for making it out to another video. I really hope that y'all, you know, enjoyed it. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I really enjoy y'all being here and supporting me. And yeah, thank you so much again. I don't know when this video is coming out. I'm recording it two days before Christmas or three days, three days before Christmas. So if it comes out before then, um, yeah, happy holidays. I probably won't make another video till the next year, <laughs> the new year, I should say. Um, and if it comes out after, um, hey, well, you know, hey, Merry Christmas, <laughs> Merry Christmas, happy holidays. And yeah, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one. Stay cool, homies. Have a good one.